Okay, so in this video we're going to move on um, and build some build a drum rack. So we looked at instrument racks in the last video. I've got the one that uh, we made there, um, and I've tweaked it a little bit, but it's essentially pretty much the same thing. So we're going to try and make some kind of um, rhythm sounds now using a drum rack. Um, I'm going to show you the way to build a drum rack sort of from the ground up. Uh, and um, perhaps we'll look at ways to make them more automatically after we do that. So I've, I've just dragged this onto a new track and this is an empty drum rack. So it starts at C1. If I play my MIDI controller, I play C1, you can see it flashing down the bottom here. And on the side you can navigate sort of up and down into different key ranges. Uh, and I'm going to stick on C1. Um, we'll discuss in class where, you know, kicks and snares and things should be if there's a standard. Um, usually it doesn't really matter if you're, you're the only one using it, but if you were going to be sharing these, then you might want to think about where to place drums so they sort of work for other people. Anyway, okay, so um, I've made a little MIDI pattern, which I just um, recorded in a minute ago. So We've got this, this is the instrument rack. Um, I'll show you how it sounds. So I'm, I'm gonna try and go uh, for a kind of, sort of a simple um, or kind of minimal drum kit sound. Here's a little kind of baseline thing that I was mucking around with. Give it a bit more decay so you can hear the notes there. And I've just added a different effect than what we had before. So So sort of like a delay with a bit of distortion. Um, I've still got this thing. So it's kind of interesting. There's a, you know already a fair bit happening. Uh, just through this one instrument. I was going to start it off just without any of that stuff for the time being. Now crank that up. I'm going to put, I think I'm going to take the attack here off um, for the time being and I'm going to put the volume of this chain here so I can increase. Yeah, and then I can add a bit of delay. Okay, so let's have a look at drum racks. I'm going to start with something quite simple and build up from there. So let's create um, a kick drum. I'm going to use um, a synthesizer to do this to start with. Uh, and we'll also look at how you can use samples. Perhaps I'll drop one uh, along with this one to give it a bit of character. Um, so dropping an operator synthesizer into a cell uh, will now allow me to play that instrument just with that one note. So if I play other notes, I don't get anything because they're playing different cells. So I'm just playing one note. So let's have a look at a, a way to make a bit of a kick drum sound. So I'm going to turn this to fixed, which means that because I'm only playing one note, I'm only going to get one pitch anyway. And I'm going to set my pitch to something that I think will suit a kick drum. So I'll Okay, so I might just type it in just so it's a bit simpler. Actually, I liked it just a little bit. Anyway, you can tune your kick drum however you want. I'm going to start with an oscillator at about 63 hertz. I think I've mentioned this in another video. I'm going to use the trigger mode, which means that I can create my envelope just using attack and decay, and I don't have to worry about release or sustain because um, <clears throat> when you use trigger mode, the note off message is ignored and the note on message will just follow this envelope. So it's good for percussive sounds. 
So I'm going to shorten this. I'm going to use a pitch envelope to give it some attack. And we've done all this before now. So I'm going to increase my initial and peak times, uh, sorry, um, levels to plus 48 semitones. I'm going to increase this. And I'm going to shorten the decay time. Okay, and just to refresh you, I'm going to put this out of phase. I'm just going to give it a really sharp click. Now, I don't really want my kick to be so clicky, so I'm going to use the filter with one of these um, algorithms, which is a simulator of an old school style EQ. And I'm going to drive it a bit to give it a bit of color, and then I'm going to bring the frequency cutoff down and see where I like it. Maybe try a different algorithm, see. Okay, so I'm just going to do a few tweaks here. I think I might just get rid of that um, phase offset. I don't really need that. And I'm actually going to muck around with the attack envelope of this because I just want to Okay, so there's a number of ways that you can create um, and manipulate the envelope of your sound. All right, I might back that off. Volume, and I can play around with this further later on, but that's a sort of starting point. So I'm just going to play along, um, play the pattern I've already made, and just see if this kind of. Might Okay, so I kind of changed my mind on a few things there. I've shortened the kick sound, so it's really quite short. Might just make it a tiny bit longer. Okay, and I'm going to chuck a compressor on there just to play around with the attack a little bit more. So I'll pop that inside the same cell. So this compressor is just on the kick drum. Okay, so I'll leave that where it is for now. All right, so I might go for a sort of wood kind of talking sound. So to do that, I'm going to use Collision. Pop that in here. And let's go for a marimba with material down to minus. Decay short. Increase the mallet hit. I'm going to play around with the tuning. And let's add a bit of noise with a really short envelope here. for a bit. Okay, that might be a bit better. We need to turn it up.
Okay, so I think this is going to need a bit of saturation to bring the sound out. There's barely anything there at the moment. That's kind of what I want. So saturation just on the collision instrument. And I'm going to have a go of some of these different um, shapes here. Crank that more. Okay, and I'm gonna actually I'll leave that. this note along a little bit. leave those two there for the moment uh, now we, I think we're gonna need some sort of um, sort of like hi-hat type sounds um, and I think I'm gonna use collision again but this time I'm gonna in fact I might use something else for this I might just try and find some record crackle or something um, and show you how I can use that instead of a synthesizer so let's pop into um, previous session might be easier <coughs> Okay, so I know that this has some good crackles in it. This is the one we've mucked around with previously, so I'll drop that into a new cell. I'm going to go to E1 this time. And I'm just going to try to do this quite quickly if I zoom in here. And I'm just looking for an individual crackle. Let's go zoom in. <coughs> Turn warping off. That's one sound that we could use. It's not quite what I'm looking for, but I'll leave that one there anyway. And I'll leave it in one shot mode with a fade out. Now, let's zoom back in. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this, option click and drag, and now I can fish around in it for, for other sounds that might be useful. Grab this handle. Let's see. Okay, so there's a bit of noise in that, but that's okay. I can um, use some EQ and also the length of this. So. Cool, that's pretty good for a little clicking sound. I'm just going to zoom in and adjust this so it's okay. Now I'm going to use EQ just on this cell to get rid of the uh, low frequency there. So let's go in um, auto filter, It'll be alright. I'm not going to use any modulation but I'm just going to use this as a filter. And bring the frequency down. Okay, so I've got some kind of clicky, um, glitchy kind of sounds there. And what I might do is duplicate this one more time over here. And let's click on it. 
Now I want to make a slightly different version of this one by transposing it. So I'm going to hop into controls and transpose the output. I'm going to filter more of those lower. There we go. Okay, so let's see if we can um, add to this rhythmic pattern um, by using these. So hit play and have a little play along and see how it sounds. So let's try. obviously way too loud. Now what I'm going to do is use the mixer up here. So by expanding the rack out, I can see the chains, which we've talked about before in the instrument rack. Rather than going in here, I can see them up in the mixer. So I'm just going to bring the level of that one down. Okay. So there's a couple of things I could do here to muck around with this. Um, I could potentially leave, um, put the level back up here and bring the volume down here. I'm also going to play around with the pitch of this one. And instead of auto filter, I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to use an EQ because I need more bands to get the sound that I want. So I'm going to filter off the low end. Definitely don't want any low end, but I'm going to muck around. There we go. In fact, it's worth having a little go of auto filter just to create some movement. So I'll show you a different way to possibly use this. So I'm going to go band pass and put that around. where I think it might work okay. Give it some drive. And then I'm going to actually give it some um, modulation. So let's... 